Hugo and Steve, are absolute ple Stephen, pleasure to talk to you about Mortal Engines. This is such a unique film about London is now this steampunk monolith moving toward, moving through this dystopian universe. And your characters both play very different roles, both in relation to the main characters mm. and in society, really. You occupy kind of different class structures mm. and run with different people. Can you tell us a little bit about your characters and what attracted you to them? Yeah. Um, well, Thaddeus Valentine is very much uh, high up in the hierarchy on the city of London, and but he's a he's a he's a cuckoo in the nest, if you like. He's an outsider who's come from somewhere else and has come to London with actually some technology. He's an archaeologist, and archaeologists in this world find old tech technology that's been destroyed and they repurpose it and try and put things together to create a future for themselves. So he's a valuable asset to the city of London and has worked his way up to be sort of second in command. And he's, he's a very capable, charismatic, charming man who's much loved by the Londoners, but at the same time he harbors a desire to change the system in which they live and to challenge the, to challenge the city into a future that he believes gives them some sort of hope whereas the, the world in which they live in now is dying. That's his sort of, that's his, that's his sort of, um, that's him in a nutshell, I guess. Mm. Yeah. And Shrike is uh, also very much outside of the system, uh, literally isolated, lives in his own little shell. Uh, he, uh, his, um, he's the, by far the oldest character uh, in this world right now, several thousand years old as well, built for purposes of war. He's a resurrected man, basically uh, they, 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 they took his, uh, put a hard drive inside a carapace and, and, and created him out of uh, a dead person and yet there's still vestiges of that soul that still kind of fly around like bats in an attic uh, in there. <coughs> Uh, and Shrike, um, but his original function is long past, which was to, to make war, and now he is, he lives on the periphery of uh, society, uh, making his coin as a bounty hunter, and the only reason he needs coin at all is so he can buy uh, dolls, because he has an inner compulsion to create, to, to, to make dolls, to take dolls and to try and build something. He's trying to build something and he doesn't know what it is he's trying to build and he doesn't know why he's trying to build it. He's, in, he's a character full of contradictions. He's, he's got purpose and he's totally confused. He's apathetic about everything in the world and he's deeply, deeply caring about this girl, Hester Shaw. It's where our What's characters not to are, love? <laughs> you know? Isn't that great? This, this is where our great characters is come together really yeah. is that we both are deeply concerned with Hester Shaw. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think mm. I, in this weird paternalistic kind of way, which uh, is a total shock to him. And indeed, there's a weird paternalistic thing for both of them. Uh, but actually, that's the greatest similarity they yeah. have. There's a sense of, of uh, yeah, Hester as being their daughters. You know, mm. there's, a, there's, there's something very special about her for both of them. And there is this emotional heart of the film that comes together with Hester. But there are also really interesting kind of political themes. It touches on issues of Brexit, that London has literally left you know, mm -hmm. Europe. There is issues to do with immigration. Peter Jackson has said he inserted a line about Trump's separation of children from their families at the border. Does that make a project more interesting when it feels so incredibly relevant to today's society? I think with all, all, of, those, all of those parallels and, and contemporary relevances were, were, were always in the script. They're not. They're not the main reason why you do something, but they 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 just they just um, they just illuminate the world in which we live now, and uh, and they're, they're generally the things that come around in history again and again. You know, Trump's not the first, and he won't be the last person to say, "I'm going to separate women from their children or parents from their children." It's happened before, and it'll happen again. So. Uh, in a world like this, which is a world at war, you get extreme things happening and you get systems in change, history repeats itself. So of course, the things, the world in which we live now is, is, is in some way paralleled and illuminated by this film. So, so you can't but help uh, seeing all those, all those parallels. Yeah, the trick here though is, is it's a, and indeed it's a very dark world that uh, that Reeve and Peter Jackson and Christian Rivers have created here, but at the same time, the it's it's all been sort of couched in what what I would describe as kind of this rollicking high adventure. Uh, 
you know, with tremendous wit and, and a lot of fun involved as well. And one would never want, to me, the, the political ramifications of this film to overtake the sheer escapist entertainment value of it because it exists on that level as well, and that's important too. So I think they've managed a very neat trick mm -hmm. here because they kind of have both. Make people laugh and have fun and think at the same time. I think so. I really do think so. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much and congratulations again on the film. Thank you. Thank you.